this video will be on Proton MMR. Proton MMR works in the same way as Carbon 13 MMR. So it is recommended that you watch the video on Carbon 13 MMR before this video. Hydrogen 1 nucleus, which is also known as a proton, also has a nuclear magnetic spin as one of its unique properties. This is because, of course, hydrogen 1 nucleus has an odd atomic number as well as an odd atomic mass. Protons absorb different radio wave frequencies compared to carbon-13 nuclei. This is reflected in the chemical shift, as you can see in an example of a proton MMR spectrum. The chemical shift in ppm of proton MMR are much smaller numerically compared to carbon-13 nuclei. In contrast to carbon-13 MMR, proton MMR analyzes the chemical environment of hydrogen nuclei. In addition, Proton MMR spectra also provide more information. Specifically, this is in two ways. Signals in a proton MMR can exhibit different number of peaks. This is known as splitting. You can see in the spectrum when you zoom into these two signals, the first signal is divided into four peaks, while the last one here is divided into three peaks. The second piece of information that's present in a proton MMR is the area under each signal or area under the curve, AUC for short. This represents the relative number of protons in each chemical environment. When analyzing an organic molecule, proton MMR should always be considered last when other types of spectral data are present, for example, infrared spectroscopy. Let's talk about signal splitting. The number of peaks that's present in each signal provides information on the number of protons, or hydrogen-1 nucleus, that's bonded to an adjacent carbon atom. Specifically, the number of peaks that's observed equals to the number of adjacent protons plus one. For this specific proton, if there are no protons attached to the adjacent carbon atom, then it will produce a signal that does not exhibit any splitting. This is called a singlet. Now, if we replace one of the carbon atoms with a hydrogen atom, this hydrogen atom will result in a splitting effect, which causes the signal for this proton to become a doublet. If a second carbon atom on the adjacent carbon is again replaced by another hydrogen, there are now two hydrogen atoms attached to the nearby carbon. This causes a signal for the blue proton to become a triplet. Finally, if the adjacent carbon atom has three protons, the signal for the blue proton becomes a quartet. All four of these examples obey the simple rule where the number of peaks you see is equal to the number of adjacent protons plus one. Signal splitting only applies to protons that's attached to a carbon atom. For example, protons that's next to an oxygen that's in alcohols and carboxylic acids, they do not exhibit splitting effect. Let's look at signal splitting using an example of propanoic acid. In propanoic acid, there are three different chemical environments for my hydrogen atoms, and these are labeled with blue, red, and yellow. If we look at the blue proton specifically, we have said that protons attached to the oxygen atom are not affected by splitting. This is why it is simply a singlet in the spectrum. Now let's look at the two protons on the second carbon atom. On the adjacent carbon atom, that is the third carbon atom, there are a total of three protons. Since the number of peaks is equal to the number of adjacent protons, which is three, plus one, the signals produced by these two red protons will be four. And this is shown here as a quartet. For the three protons at the end of the molecule on the third carbon atom, the adjacent carbon atom has two protons attached to it. So the number of peaks is equal to two plus one, which gives us three. This is why the signal produced by the three protons is a triplet, as you can see here on the right-hand side of the spectrum. The second piece of information provided by proton MMR spectrum is the relative area under each signal. This information tells us the number of protons which share that particular signal or chemical environment. Again, let's use propanoic acid to explain this feature. As we saw earlier, there are three chemical environments in propanoic acid. However, in each chemical environment, there are a different number of protons. 
In the blue environment, there's only one proton. In the red environment, there are two protons. And in the yellow environment, there are three protons. The first signal on the far left-hand side is produced by the first proton that's attached to the oxygen. And the second signal is produced by the two protons on the second carbon atom. The third signal is produced by the three protons in the third carbon atom. The numbers at the bottom of the spectrum tells us the relative area under each signal. And you can see the numbers themselves reflect the relative number of protons in each corresponding chemical environment. There's one proton in the OH environment, two protons in the CH2 environment in red, and three protons in the CH3 environment in yellow. Now I want to use an example to show you why proton memma is a very powerful technique. Here we've got two examples of ester molecules, methyl ethanoate and ethyl methanoate. If we use infrared spectroscopy, it is very difficult to tell apart these two compounds because they have identical bonds and exactly the same functional group. Similarly, mass spectrometry is not suitable as these two compounds have identical molecular mass and therefore produce the same molecular ion peak. Using carbon-13 MMR, we will produce two spectra with the same number of carbon signals, as in both molecules, there are a total of three carbon environments. In addition, the chemical shift of the signals that we will see in a carbon-13 MMR will be very similar in these two molecules, as the environment for each carbon atom are more or less similar. However, in this particular situation, proton MMR can be easily used to distinguish between the two isomers of esters. This is because in methyl ethanoids, there are only two proton chemical environments, which gives rise to two signals in the proton MMR spectrum. In contrast, in ethyl methanoids, this compound produces three signals due to the presence of three chemical environments for its hydrogen atoms. Evidently, by examining the number of proton environments and signals in the proton MMR spectra, we can easily identify methyl ethanoids from its isomer ethyl methanoids. This concludes the video on proton MMR.